On the edge of Dartmoor, a little steam engine is shunting the carriages, which will make up the first train of the day on the South Devon Railway. This is an important day for the railway. They're Thomas the Tank Engine event. The fat controller's trying to keep order, but there's already a queue at the booking office. Volunteer railway men have come from far and wide to operate the railway. And among them is their unpaid traction inspector, Colin Kurzweil from Kent. Few visitors realise that this quiet man is one of the most celebrated engine drivers in Britain. When he's not volunteering on the railways, Colin is paid to drive the Golden Arrow. Once upon a time, a little boy decided to be an engine driver, like his dad. But dad wanted young Colin to find something better. The youngster wouldn't be put off. He haunted station platforms for years. His mind was made up. Thomas the Tank Engine's appeal isn't new. Generations of children have felt the same. For some people are born with steam in their veins instead of blood. Colin Kurzweil turns up for work at a depot in London with Jim, his fireman. It's 60 years since Colin caught the railway bug. My father, having done 42 years on the railway, decided that he would leave the railway. I think it was again to discourage me. So he decided to take a pub and we moved down to the railway hotel in Faversham in Kent. That was the worst thing that could have happened to me because it was a railwayman's pub and the railwaymen used to come in with their cheese sandwiches and their onion and they'd have a pint of beer prior to working to London or prior to working to Ramsgate and I just used to sit there listening in awe at their tales and stories. Today Colin will take a big southern railway engine called Clan Line to the Kent coast. As a kid, he used to watch steam trains at Faversham. Instead of doing my homework, which I used to get a lot of, I used to go and stand very close to where we lived and watch my father go past with the King Arthurs and the West Countries and all the other locomotives that they used to drive and wave to him. If only his dad could see him now, he'd be so proud of his son. I used to go to the shed at Hither Green where my father was and I can see it now walking up number one road at Hither Green, looking up these massive great wheels and massive great motions. They were six foot, six foot three tall, and me being five, four or five years of age, they, they seemed so big. And there was always a smell. I still can sometimes, sometimes that smell, the smell of burning coal, oil, warm oil, and, and there's a smell which I, always takes me back to my very, very, very young years. And I used to walk up the depot at Hither Green. Colin waits for the right away at Victoria Station in his cab full of pipes and levers. The main control is the regulator, which brings the huge engine to life. Now the engine man has to juggle with the power in order to stop the six foot two inch wheels slipping and spinning. It's amazing that a smooth wheel grips a shiny rail at all. 
The footplate is unbelievably hot and noisy. But Collins' running commentary above the din gives an idea of the things that run through a steam driver's mind. There's an increase in the regulator. 80 pound in the steam chest. This is where we cross over to the down pass line, 15 mile an hour speed, remembering that the whole train has passed over at 15 mile an hour, not just the engine. Shut the cylinder cocks again. Green signal, green line, open the regulator for more. Adjust the cut off to about 60% cut off. Still 15 mile an hour as the train's going over the crossover behind. We're now in down the steep part of the bank. Where I can afford to open the regulator more. Victoria carriage sidings on the left. There used to be a turntable in the steam days where we used to turn the locomotive. But that's no longer there. Collins taking the Orient Express on a tour of Kent. The engine has power to spare but is held back by other traffic and blows off steam. For years, steam locomotives were banned from the main line. Colin had a premonition that one day they would return. Sometimes he lay in bed imagining that day and waited for 30 years for his prophecy to come true. I always kept a pair of overalls and a pair of boots uh, under the stairs where we have a cupboard because I had a premonition that I would get back on the steam on the main line. Now that might sound absurd, but, but it, it, that was really the case. Their destination today is Canterbury. The travellers will have a few hours to explore the city before returning to London via Dover and Folkestone. So it isn't really the same as the Golden Arrow of years gone by. In those days, the Golden Arrow was a boat train that became the flesh door on the other side of the channel. Ports like Folkestone were teeming with traffic. Whole trains could be driven straight onto the ferries, just like cars are nowadays. But times have changed, and the only ferry in port would have looked as alien as the Starship Enterprise to someone like Colin's father, and he'd have been amazed at how the green fields above Folkestone are now the portals of a tunnel under the channel. But perhaps the most amazing thing is that the train has somehow survived. It could almost be some fantastically detailed children's train set running across a scale model of Folkestone Viaduct. It really does belong to a bygone age when everyday life was completely different. There wasn't the food available in those days, there wasn't the choice. It was either cheese or local man's chicken, which was egg sandwiches. That was local man's chicken. Um, the, the tea and sugar, we used to have uh, greaseproof paper. With, my wife used to do it for me. Three teaspoonfuls of tea, two of sugar and condensed milk, and put it in greaseproof paper, wrap it up. Then when we made the tea, we used to put it in a tea can, pour the boiling water on, and pour the greaseproof paper out, swing it round, and that was your tea before the days of tea bags. And of course on a foot plate you couldn't take milk because, you know, um, it would have gone sour, gone off. So that's how we used to make our tea. Two worlds meet briefly. In one direction, the ultra-modern Eurostar is heading for France. In the other direction, Clan Line is waiting for the signal to depart from Paddock Wood. Colin has been on the phone to the signaller, but still finds time for a cheery word with a passenger. He's a happy man, and also considers himself to be a lucky man. Lucky to end his career where he started, on steam trains. I used to think that I was born too late and that I missed so much of the steam in the BR days. But as it's worked out, I've been very, very lucky because I've had steam both ends of my career. 
and now we have the privilege of driving these magnificent engines, these locomotives, which are so you know, well restored and in such fine condition. So, uh, I say it is a privilege to do that. But for Colin, that privilege is about to end. He's approaching 65, retirement age. How's it going to be on his last day as a steam driver? Probably tears. I, I don't particularly look forward to that day, and I sincerely mean that. Um, it's, it's been an incredible experience. Uh, a dream come true, as I've said. Uh, and I just have to see what happens on the day. Colin's plan for retirement is to build a working model of a steam engine in his garage. And sometimes he'll take his grandchildren to the station to see the golden arrow go by. His working life as a railway man has had a happy ending. For who'd have thought that steam trains would still be chopping through the Garden of England in the golden sunlight of a 21st century summer's evening? Colin Kurzweil has come down from Kent to the South Devon Railway for their Thomas Day. It's a busman's holiday for a professional railwayman. He's their unpaid traction inspector. It means keeping a fatherly eye on safe driving standards. While he works behind the scenes, the fat controller is the public face of the railway and he's annoyed that Thomas is late. There are rumours that the little tank engine has had to stop for a drink at the River Dart. It's certainly a hot day, and Thomas's crew are looking worried about something. At last they arrive in the station, where the fat controller is fussing. Of course, what's really happening is that the railway people are play-acting for the watching children. But they can only clown about safely because of the professionalism built into their organisation by railwaymen like Colin Kurzweil. The children are enthralled. Thomas has got a tummy ache. The crew are fishing around in his tanks. And yes, they've caught a fish, a flatfish. Just how a flounder made its way from the sea into a Devon river is something for the anglers to discuss. But this is spellbinding stuff for the children. Why do railway volunteers go to such trouble to entertain the children? Well, I don't know. I, I just love it, and, and um, I love this part of the country. Uh, I, I love railways, as I've said. And if I could put back a little bit into the preservation scene, what I've taken out on my mainline journeys and experiences, then that would make me happy. I would like to do that. This engine is a survivor of the old Great Western Railway. And today, its crew are due for a visit from the traction inspector. It's a low-key and friendly formality. Should be long, we'll be away. Colin's well aware that the crew are experts. He's unlikely to find much wrong. This is your assessment as a fireman and yours as a driver, so... Oh, look, back up now. <laughs> <laughs> the rules dictate that the men get an appraisal from the inspector from time to time. Yeah, well, today we're, uh, we have to assess the drivers and the firemen on a regular basis, and today we're just going to uh, see how Steve Coates and, and Kevin... They're both very capable, Kevin's a very capable driver and Steve a very capable fireman, but just to keep the records up to date, we have to do this assessment. The railway runs through gorgeous Devon countryside, so Colin's job is hardly the most arduous for a steam lover.
on a solid 060 uh, tender engine. Lovely engine. Came to the railway last year. It's a master of any train we we could uh, use. Up, uh, we need to work up and down the branch here. Very free steaming, two cylinder engine, and runs very well. As you can see, Kevin has got the regulator only opening the first valve. He's just altering the cut off now, somewhere to about 25, 30, 35 percent cut off now. It soon becomes clear that Kevin and Steve are masters of the job. So they offer Colin a chance to drive a type of locomotive that's unfamiliar to a southern engine line. Right, about 100 yards, you've got a 15 mile an hour speed. Right. They've climbed through the tree-lined valley of the Dart as far as Buckfastley, which is the northern limit of the South Devon Railway. Colin's hoping that one day his own grandson might drive a steam train here. He's certainly got a suitable name. Thomas, yes, Thomas, he's a member on the South Devon Railway and he's, he comes down, or he came down last year and he spent a day collecting tickets and clipping tickets uh, and uh, he wears a South Devon tie and a pair of um, neatly pressed trousers and a white shirt and, and he goes about his duty uh, um, and hopefully he's coming down this year to do the same. <laughs> A few days later, Colin is due back at work on the Golden Arrow. It's been brought down to Canterbury by another Kentish driver, John Neal, under the supervision of the jovial mainline traction inspector, Dennis Donovan. Colin will take it back to London when the engine has been cold and watered in the station platform. Wherever clan line goes, a volunteer support crew goes with it. Their job is to service the engine because the modern railway isn't geared up for steam. They're the unsung heroes of the tours. Colin is looking sad, and there's a good reason. Retirement looms in a few weeks' time. Nice to see you. Are you all right? Yeah, not too bad. Hello, Bob. Hello, Dennis. Come shake hands, please. Salutations, one and all. Oh, you all right? Salutations. Did you get that? <laughs> Retirement is not something Colin's looking forward to, even though he'll treasure more time with the family. The last day I walk away, I don't know exactly how I shall feel. There'll be certainly sadness. Um, I'm looking forward to retirement to be spend more time with my wife and family, but I do love coming to work. Now that might sound strange, but I do enjoy my job on the railway and the uh, icing on the cake is working on steam engines. It's time to go. He wants to make the most of these last few precious trips 
because soon he'll be just another face on the platform, watching the trains go by. signal is off, so we'll open the regulator a little bit more, adjust the cut off to about 60% and gradually take the train away. Whenever Colin goes to work, a little good luck charm goes with him. He uses it to keep the dust out of his jacket, as a fastener for the lapels. And he can remember, like yesterday, the moment he acquired his safety pin. <laughs> yeah, the blue safety pin, that was my son's. He's 32 now, and it was one of his nappy pins in the old days when nappies were nappies, not disposable as they are now. And I've always kept it, it's always brought me good luck and uh, I shall keep it forevermore. The train arrives back at Victoria. One trip nearer retirement. But one more happy memory for the man with the golden arrow. He's eternally grateful to the steam lovers who prevented engines like this being cut up by a welder's torch. For that was the plan back in the 1960s. Enjoy that, well done, thank you. I'm extremely proud to, to have been associated with the steam both when I started on the railway and now towards my retirement and very privileged to be so. Um, I love every minute of it, I would do it for nothing, I don't mind saying, and, and if when I retire, if they ask me to come back, I would do it again for nothing.